Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. This is Thanksgiving week here in the USA. In fact, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so this is the time of year when the stores stock turkeys at a very affordable price. Now, I have been planning to roast up some turkey and put it away in my freezer for my Lazy Man meals. If you're not familiar with my Lazy Man meals, I have a page on my website. Basically, I do big, big cooking, like I'm gonna do today. And then I portion everything and put it away. And when I want to eat something, when it's dinner time, lunch time, I go to the freezer, pick out three packs, put them on a paper plate, heat them on a microwave, eat my dinner, wash my fork. I'm done. The whole process goes very quickly and I don't have a lot of pots and pans and stuff to wash. It's easy and that's why it's lazy. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to debone this turkey and roast it. One of the fans of the website said, I want you to video that. He wants to see it. Now it's going to be a big long process so I'm going to speed up a lot of the video so you don't have to watch me deboning this turkey for probably over an hour. Anyways, but one thing I do want to do is I want to read something to you that I found in a good housekeeping magazine. This is, I actually got it from the internet. This was dated November 10th, 1888. And it's about Thanksgiving. The title of the column is Just Before Thanksgiving, The Turkey, How to Clean Stuff, Truss, and Roast It. And I want to read you an excerpt from this because I thought this was hilarious when I read it. The drumstick of a turkey is greatly improved by removing the tendons, which always become hard and bony in baking. Cut carefully through the skin below the leg joint, but do not cut the tendons. Bend the leg at the cut by pressing it on the edge of a table and break off the bone. Then pull out the tendons one at a time with the fingers or all at once by putting the foot of the fowl against the casing of a door that opens toward you then pressing the door hard against the foot and pulling on the leg the tendons will come out attached to the foot can you see some lady in 1888 in those big huge dresses that they wore jamming a turkey foot in a door, holding the door shut with one foot while she's yanking on this turkey. <laughs> and by the way, I've tried even using pliers. The tendons do not pull out. How are you supposed to pull them out with, a, with your fingers one at a time? Pliers, I mean, I'm talking really good hard grip, those lock grip pliers. You can't get those things out. They have to be cut out. So. I think this was theoretical rather than practical. So let's get into me starting to debone my 24 pound turkey. All right, here's my huge turkey. I have some stainless steel. Um, these are from steam table. Uh, these are steam table pans. This big one over here is going to be for trim. I'm going to be using my trim for making stock. Then I have two smaller ones over here. I'm going to be putting my meat in those. You're going to see this all the way through from cleaning to roasting. So let's get the inside stuff out. Here's the neck. It's a little bit frozen on the inside. I won't tell you what my dad tried to tell me that thing was when I was a boy. Dirty old man. All right. Um, get the wings off first, I guess. I have on the website a video on how to debone a chicken. Turkey, obviously, is very similar to a chicken. However, turkeys are a lot more work because on a chicken, the, the joints are, are so much softer. You can pop the joints out easily. Yeah, to remove things like the wings and the legs. But for a turkey, and I've done a goose as well, 
the joints are really, really tough. Okay. Come on. Almost there. There we go. I'm trying to be careful cutting this wing out because I don't want to cut up my, my um, breast meat. So there is one of the wings. I'm going to section this. This is what they call the drumette. This middle section is the wingette, and this is the wing tip. I'm actually going to separate this into drumette and wingette, and I'm going to cook these separately. That'll be my lunch today. I refer to those as my chef's reward for doing all this work. That's what I get to eat. So there's one wing out. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, you don't want to attempt this without a really sharp knife. The sharp knife will just go right through everything. Now, I want to get the skin off. So you just basically want to cut down through the center of the bird. And there's the other thing I was looking for. I found the neck. They usually have a bag with uh, the heart and the gizzard and liver in it. Along the center of the breast here and along the center of the back, the, the skin adheres really well. There's a lot of connective tissue or whatever it is. Okay, turn this bird over. Again, as I said earlier, along the center of the breast and along the center of the back, the skin adheres really, really well. So you just have to get in there with your sharp knife and cut it free. You can see why this takes so long. There's just so much more of it. When you do a chicken, I can probably do a chicken in minutes. All right, I'm gonna lay this on its side. Along the back of the thigh is another area where the skin adheres real tightly. Here we go. This is the fun part. I'm going to try to pull the skin. Oh, it's coming off. At least down to the joint. And then I can just cut that off. So that's half my bird skinned. And I want to do this other side. Remove the skin along the back. I will admit this is a lot of work, but I to me, I mean, I don't want to tell other people what to do, but I know for me, I just feel as though if I'm going to be a really good kitchen cook and not only be skillful, but save money, I just feel as though it's important to know how to do something like deboning chickens and turkey and geese, whatever. It seems like there's a lot more trimming to do, too, because there's so much connective tissue. And then once again, pull the skin off. And there's all my skin off. That will go into my stock pot. And then remove the legs. Just like a chicken, there's a bone right in here that I want to cut along because there's a lot of meat that is part of that thigh. This joint is not going to pop very easily. Yeah, there it goes. Wow. So there is the turkey leg. Okay, I'm going to debone this first. Just like with a chicken, you can separate the bones at the joint. But unlike a chicken, this joint is very tough to cut through. Okay, drumstick and thigh. So now I'm working along the thigh bone here. There's my thigh bone out. And just like on the chicken, there's this extra piece of joint that stays behind. I'm going to trim some of this fat off. And is there a tendon in this one? There should be a tendon right down in here. 
So there is my deboned thigh, one of them. Drumstick. Get in under these tendons and cut toward the joint because that's where they're softest at the joint. And then start cutting down to the bone here. See, part of the problem that makes it a little bit more difficult again is because you've got so much more to work around, such as all these tendons, and I'll show you those tendons in a minute. There it is. There is the drumstick bone out. And these are all these tendons that I have to cut out now. There's a good dozen of them or so in there. They feel like bones. They are rather hard. Some of them are easy to cut out when they're right along the top outside. Okay, what I've done with that is there's the tendon right there. But all of this is that silver skin, or sometimes they call it blue skin, that I might as well remove it. Okay, so there it is, tendon and silver skin. It does feel good when I put a lot of food up in the freezer and I know I won't have to cook again for months. I mean, I have enough lamb, chicken, and turkey put away that I won't have to cook literally for months. It's all heat and serve now. Portioned and frozen. I'll cook for my website. But I won't have to cook to feed myself. So that's it. There is a turkey drumstick deboned. Now the other leg. Crack and pop. I have one friend who just cringes when the, he's watching me debone chicken and I pop the joints. Okay, I'm trying to find the joint now. It's right there. You can get in there with your fingers and feel where the joint is. There's my other thigh bone out. And that last piece of joint. Just feeling around here to make sure that I got all pieces of bone out. Just going to trim this up a little bit and get the, a lot of this excess fat off. Same thing, get under the tendons and cut down toward the, where the foot would, would be. Okay, and then just cut down. I just go with this. There's a long side of the drumstick here and a short side. I just go in from the short side. Just start cutting in all the way down to the bone. Okay, and there is the drumstick bone out. Now start working out all these tendons. I think I'm going to count them this time. See how many I got. There's one.
Okay, 17 of them, I guess, are in there. I don't feel any more. A little bit of trimming to do here. And now in this pan will we'll go my breast meat. This is always tough because now the bird is top heavy. I'm gonna cut right down along part of the breast bone they call the keel. And then just start working down along the rib cage, separating that breast meat from the ribs. Okay, cutting down to where the wish bone is. This is the joint where the wing attached. And then just like on a chicken, there's a large piece of meat down here at the bottom. And then there it is, one big, huge turkey breast. And the other side, which is a real nuisance to do because not only is it top heavy, but it's side heavy. This is the hardest piece to cut free because you really have to support the bird with your hand. Working down along the rib cage. And then working down around that joint where the wing attached. Some nice pieces of meat down here that I don't want to lose. Okay, just about there at the scapula. And there's my second with that flap of meat. That's a nice piece of meat. Okay, there's my two carcass pieces. So there is all my trim. That I'm going to use to make stock. And then my two breast meat pieces are in there. I'm going to get all this cleaned up and then I'll start prepping to do my roasting. Okay, my next step here is to prep some pans, some baking pans. This is my old metal pan that's peeling its coating. I want to replace this. I'm using some um, rub mix here, herbal rub mix. I'm putting some on the bottom so it'll season the meat from underneath. As I was mentioning, I'll replace this one of these days when I can find something that isn't made in China. Not that I have a problem with Chinese made goods. Some of them are very good. My Nikon flash for my Nikon cameras made in China and it's a beautiful flash. But we have a problem with unemployment in this country and so I think it's important to stimulate our economy by buying U.S. made goods rather than Chinese made goods. And why give jobs to Chinese when the Americans need, Americans need jobs? So I try to buy American as much as I can. Say those are my two thighs, my two drumsticks. Nice and heavy. There's one of my pieces of breast meat. Another piece of breast meat. Same thing, put some more some of these herbs on top. I don't put a lot on, but it gives it some extra flavor since I'm not going to be browning this meat. This will give it some color on the outside and it'll give it some extra flavor. Okay, my oven, as I mentioned earlier, is heated up to 350 degrees. I know these will cook in about an hour, but these will take about 90 minutes. I'm going to cover these with foil and put these in the oven. And then I'll finish washing my dishes. I only have these two pieces to wash. And then I can rest for a while while these are baking. My turkey meat has come out of the oven. This has cooled down enough that I can handle this. This is the dark meat. This baked for one hour. The white meat, which I just took out, baked for I did it for 90 minutes. It wasn't enough. I baked it another 10 minutes to bring it up to a safe temperature. This didn't come up to 160, which is 170, which is the safe temperature to eat. But these aren't going to be eaten today. These came up to over 140, which is a safe temperature for carving this up and then freezing it. Then later on, when it gets reheated for eating, it'll easily come up to 170, 180. So, 
let me begin carving this up. I have my two stainless steel steam table pans sitting there, the two smaller ones. I'm going to put the dark meat in one and the white meat in the other. So, I always do my lazy man meals in three ounce portions as far as the meat goes. Yes, that's a jet going overhead. This really is a trailer park near the airport. I'm also near the tracks. So as I was saying, three ounce packs. So obviously for each of these packs, I will put two ounces of light meat in each pack and one ounce of dark meat. They'll be mixed. I slice all this up so that when I'm eating my Lazy Man meals, I don't need a knife. I can just eat my dinner with a fork. It's already pre-cut up. Again, one less thing to wash. This looks very moist. Feels moist from the way the knife is going through it. Yeah, this is really moist. You can see the juices in it. And I think these pieces are kind of large. Okay, there's all my meat. The next step now is to get all this packaged, but first I've got to clean up my mess here and I'll be ready for my next step. This is my system for sealing all of my Lazy Man meal packs before putting them in the freezer. It may seem like a crazy amount of work, but with all of the turkey, chicken, lamb that I currently have in the freezer, I don't expect I'm going to have to cook any more this winter. It's November, day before Thanksgiving. I'm thinking I probably aren't I'm not going to need to cook any meat again until maybe February, March, April. I have never eaten healthier meals. And because I eat mostly my Lazy Man meals now, I've lost nearly 30 pounds I'm trying to lose weight. Were you able to count? I was. I put up 46 servings of turkey. The turkey cost me $21.51. That's 47 cents per serving. Not bad. Now you don't have to comment and tell me how crazy you think I am. I already know. But I think it's even more crazy to be washing pots and pans and dishes every night for a meal when it's totally unnecessary. I can put a meal in the microwave and it's hot in six and a half minutes. I sit down and eat. When I'm done, I wash my fork. While I was doing the second half of this video, cutting the meat and packaging it, I was downloading a DVD that I couldn't find anywhere in the USA. Something about a pastry kitchen, I think. Looks like it might be pretty good, so that's what I'm going to do next. My stock is still on the stove. That's cooked. I'm just waiting for it to cool down enough where it will be comfortable to handle. Later on, I'll put my stock up, and I'm done. I can sit down and relax, watch my, D my DVD, and I don't have to cook like this for a good now three or four months. I've got so much chicken and lamb and turkey in the freezer. I wouldn't be surprised if I can go without cooking for five, even six months. That would be pretty good. Not bad. Crazy? Yeah. <laughs> but who wants to cook 
I can cook for my website now.